We're back out live at the 2015 NEB Show Studio Experience, and we're going to be talking enterprise class storage and workflows with Robert Herzon, CEO of ScaleLogic. Thanks, Steve. And a, a new gentleman I haven't met before today, Jeff Greenwald. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. Good, good afternoon. You got a big title, right? You're the Director of Alliances and Communications for Media and Entertainment for Hitachi Data Systems. A Is mouthful, that right? A mouthful. Let's start with you. If you could tell us a little bit about Hitachi and then Hitachi Data Systems. Sure. Hitachi is a worldwide conglomerate. We are about 300,000 people. Uh, we this year will end up around 100 mil, 100 billion dollars with a B. 100 in billion of, dollars in revenue. In right? revenue. Yeah. Our focus is, and this is across all of the divisions of Hitachi. Our focus is on changing the world, social innovation. And all of the divisions are intent on making our world a better place for all of us. So our investments from a technology standpoint are in smart cities, they are in transportation, they're in medical and healthcare, and our small little $20 billion uh, part of the of the world is an information technology. Small and in $20 billion $20 part billion of the world. Dollars. So our intent is on leveraging technologies from communications equipment to the IT technology that you know us about storage and networking and server compute and all the software and services associated with that and cloud. That's what that small $20 billion piece of this very large company is all about. And distribution is global. Well, we do business in over 110 countries directly, but we also have relationships with partners and distributors that extend far beyond that. So um, uh, our, our focus, uh, Hitachi Data Systems, this international division, we sell in about 105 countries, and we are pretty evenly split in the IT group in the Americas, which is North and South America, um, as well as Europe and Africa and Asia PAC. So those, that revenue split is pretty even across, uh, across those three geographies. So we're talking servers, we're talking storage, we're talking infrastructure, the whole package. We are, although the very long title of mine that you were just uh, reading off, my focus is on dealing with companies who are in the communications industry or in media and broadcast. More and more of what we spend money on is on entertainment, information, and news. Uh, and that information build-out is really at its infancy today as we get more and more services on our mobile devices and delivered to our homes, to our cars, as well as to our children and our families. So with that as a background now, Bob, you're in a great place to be able to partner with a company like Hitachi in the media and entertainment space because you've got practical real world experience and you have solutions that you can put onto Hitachi platforms working with them to get leverage all the power, right? And that, that's kind of the idea of you guys being here together. We, we need both the depth and the agility that ScaleLogic provides. We provide technology, we provide market penetration, and we also have relationships in this market segment with over 1,350 communications and broadcast companies. So we can open doors, but we also need the specific technology focus that ScaleLogic brings to bear. We can't be everywhere and be as deep as we want. So we leverage the partnerships with Bob's company and others to deliver the market requirements in this segment. You know, it's in the name of our organization is Scale. And so when we look at the partnerships that we're developing, it's about how do we take the technology that we've got and scale it as fast as we possibly can into the markets that need it. And tying ScaleLogic and HDS together, we're leveraging the talents of both companies to allow that to happen from a design standpoint, from a feed on the street standpoint, support standpoint, uh, all the way across the board. And it just brings credibility to the converged solution that we provide. How long have you been working together now? 
probably been working on this partnership for close to four years, probably three to four years. Any particular installations that you guys did that were uh, really interesting or you were able to, you know, really leverage? Uh, lots of collaboration going on. I would concur to the one thing where we were talking about where does HDS fit in the marketplace and through all the opportunities and the work that we've done, it's been across the globe. So we've had great penetration in uh, Asia, uh, phenomenal penetration in Europe now, and the U.S. market growing rapidly. Congratulations on that. It's a great partnership. We communicate well together. There you go. So with, with the media and entertainment space, maybe we could talk a little bit about workflow. Here in the studio experience, we have things organized as acquiring information, acquiring data, sound, visuals, um, creating content from either scratch or from those assets that we've acquired, and then managing, distributing, and finally experiencing to the consumer. So if we can kind of put things into sort of those broad categories that would help you know, for consistency, but maybe we can talk about the workflow solutions you guys deliver and, and how it can help across that whole range. We call that end-to-end -end media workflow. Okay. Starting from content capture and ingest, it could mean creating original content, uh, VFX or, or other animation, um, but then you have to do colorization and lighting and editing, and so there's a, a maturation process of that file data. As it moves through the workflow, it has to be controlled and managed with media asset management. The files need to be meta-tagged both for the actual content itself as well as extended uh, metadata. And then it moves through to an archive state, needs to be transcoded, needs to be broadcast, delivered, uh, and in some cases has to be staged for the video on demand. More and more of what we watch today in the marketplace is not in real time. In fact, even this program will probably be replayed at another time by people on waskull.tv. So more and more of that needs to be tiered and the, the data must live either in a cloud, uh, in a data center, uh, at an accessible edge point by a mobile device in order to be recalled. All of those things are under significant pressure today, moving from 2K to 4K. So in the light of that architecture, we look to scale logic to provide various solutions along that way. We can't do it all. But I'll tell you, the broadcasters in the world, they do have to do it all. And so they look to scale logic with products like HyperFS to fill some of those key critical uh, application uh, areas of that workflow. So a perfect example of that <clears throat> is something that we accomplished recently together as a team, and that's uh, a qualification for Adobe Anywhere. So Adobe Anywhere is taking on a lot of uh, higher end accounts, uh, US, Europe, and in Asia. Uh, HDS and Scalelogic teamed up. We put together a very high performance configuration in the Scalelogic lab. We went through all of the test uh, qualifications that we needed to do with the cooperation of Adobe and we were able to very quickly put together a certified platform for Adobe. That's deployed now? Uh, qualifications, we just finished those off uh, at the uh, uh, end of last month. Um, just got the certification or the qualifications from Adobe and now we're rolling that out. And we're moving to the uh, proof of concept phase with the number of customers because of that certification. Does that so, help? Yeah. yeah so oh, it does. absolutely does. And so it gives you the credibility to go into very large enterprises that are delivering uh, video services and say, here's the data. It jumps them through their qualification process for them to get to production much faster. You've been in this for quite a few years, Jeff. This is a business that uh, this is not a part-time hobby for any of the hundreds of people in Hitachi that do this. Right. This is a career. Uh, you usually start in a technical part of the business, uh, doing editing, doing uh, film uh, capture uh, in the IT department. Uh, but you have to be able to look at this industry in a workflow. People don't really, really care about how many petabytes your storage holds or how fast or what kind of Intel uh, uh, chips you're using. 
They really want to look at the benefits of how can you deliver this workflow functionally, how do you meet the requirements in the SLAs of the end user on the device that they're watching. Um, that's really the focus and that is why um, we, we talk about enterprise class SAN solutions. Um, that's a component, but that's not what the customer cares about. The customer cares about the video experience. And that's really the measure by which Bob and I are really measured. Are we delivering to that customer expectation? Yeah, and then for your whole end-to-end -end workflow and delivery, it's really also about the experience for the creative folks too, right? Sitting in a workstation or whatever they have. They don't want to care about the infrastructure that's behind them. They just want to do whether it's 4K, 6K, 8K, multiple streams of 4K, whatever they're doing, they just want to be creative and get it done as fast and efficiently as possible or get as many iterations as they need on a visual effects shot, for example, right? They, they do also care about one other thing, and that's the actual UI of the tool itself. How you interface as an artist with the actual tool. Um, certain things can improve your productivity and your efficiency. Clumsy tools can actually lengthen the time uh, and what matters in our world is reiterations. The more reiterations you can do of a video file in a shorter period of time, the higher quality, the, resil the brilliance of that image, that's what matters. So delivering that to the artists and the creative uh, engineers and the directors, they want to be able to do more iterations so the video experience is better. You've been on the creative side? Once or twice. You can tell. My initial assumption from IT folks would be that you'd think, or just, just you know, normal things. If I give this to people faster, because they have a faster workstation, or faster whatever, right? Infrastructure, whatever the whole workflow is, that they'll just do more jobs, right? They'll get more work done, they'll make more movies, whatever. But you just said something that is exactly the way it is, so it kind of gave it away that you've been on the creative side. If you can bring better tools to bear through what Scale Logic is bringing in Hitachi, it gives the creative people, they, they know an effect shot's gonna take about this long, right, to mm -hmm. do. So if it means they can do more iterations of that effect shot now and the shot is much more realistic, much better, gets closer to what the director wanted, that's what they're going to do with that time. They're going to love you for it, right? Versus, Ta yeah. the, the time to completion never is, sh change. Never is shorter. Right, it exactly. always is this. And there's a deadline and you always finish the night before that deadline. But the quality of what you deliver is what differentiates your end user product. And that's what... Uh, first of all, gives you a, a reputation and a brand in the industry. And that's why many of the creative brands that we all know about um, are well known because of the quality of what they deliver. That's really a neat uh, thing for the audience uh, watching this to understand that, uh, you know, not only you get it, Bob, that came across in our first interview, yeah. but Hitachi Data Systems does as well. So that's impressive, actually. If I'm jumping up to very high performance servers and storage solutions and infrastructure, um, how is that helping my end-to-end -end experience? Well, I think one of, one of the biggest things that we put together with the enterprise equipment and the software layers that go on top of it is the ability to take away islands of storage and really uh, consolidate uh, the storage, the performance to support multiple workflows through a, be it a single UI, um, or just a single storage bucket. I think that, that really takes away a lot of the complexity that many facilities have to deal with, gets rid of a lot of the, uh, the uh, uh, transfers and copies that have to take place, and builds a much more collaborative uh, uh, work environment across the multiple workflows. And the software you're using for that interface is well, I mean, it starts with the file system with HyperFS. HyperFS, right. Having, we the talked abil about that. having the ability to um, set the performance out for high performance block level clients, but then be able to scale out into the facility for all of their gigabit traffic that they need as well. So that's, that's the key. Um, that drives the infrastructure with the storage. And then you can layer on top of that. Uh, that can be a, uh, uh, an HSM 
package that migrates the media and lets you move it from high cost or higher, higher performance, more expensive storage into secondary, secondary out to cloud instances. Um, you can look at, you know, part of that lab experience in, in the collaboration that we do is working with probably no less than 40 uh, different ISVs out in, out in the show floor. They have different requirements for how data gets moved, how data gets tracked, the metadata, and with that, we have to test all these different attributes and be able to tweak and tune. It's a lot of testing. <clears throat> Yeah. It's, it's a lot of uh, understanding of the workflow, a lot of testing, yeah. retesting. Do you find it's as much an art as it is a science? Um, it helps to have the amount of experience that we have. You really need to understand the customers. Uh, it's a different type of customer. Like, uh, like Jeff had said, we're working with the creative side. Uh, you're not always working with the IT-centric individuals. And therefore, understanding the customer, the workflow, the experience that they need, and being flexible as an organization to make sure that you can provide that for them. How about on the distribution side, content distribution? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, that's probably the bigger end of the market for, for HDS. It, it is, and Bob talked about the up to the 40 ISVs that, uh, that, that uh, he was mentioning. We, we actually support over 200 ISVs in this space, and many of them are on the broadcast play out uh, side of the, the house and that's because we have so much content today um, and people now have a demanding expectation of personalization of content and that trend is actually accelerating. People don't want uh, commercials and advertisement and programming that doesn't relate to what we're interested in. We want a very specific experience around the content for me or for my family or for my company. So that um, focused content aggregation and delivery is a very large part of the marketplace today and an area that we're not, we're not ignoring all the areas of the workflow that, that uh, ScaleLogic is involved in or content creation. In fact, in our booth here at NAB we have uh, 2K and 4K cameras. Hitachi uh, cameras, by the way. Hitachi yep. makes cameras as well. So we are really investing across every across the entire workflow, not to the exclusion of others, but trying to build and create a best of breed uh, integrated solution. And we also work with systems integrators uh, throughout the world because the way we deliver that content is different in Malaysia than it is in England, than it is in New York City. Sure. Um, so you have to take the technology platforms and tweak them a little bit with the best you can to suit the needs of the users in the various markets. One of the things that was interesting to me that people are bringing up, looking at all those different devices, is that it's becoming time when you can actually transcode for Bob here in real time the video he wants to watch versus say in my old paradigm I have you know 10 different flavors if you will of transcodes that I want so I take my content we transcode it 10 different times we put it on our storage we decide we you know our, our application of course looks out and sees who's going to be watching and you push to them the right stream right pretty simple setup but now with some of the new processors you guys have access to from Intel for example with our E3 um, people are coming up with solutions that are becoming very cost effective for transcoding everything on the fly. Let's talk about what's next, what's yeah. coming next. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And that's what we call an analytics. We want to do actually real-time streaming analytics on a transcoded format solution that is being delivered today to a specific user. Quite amazing to think that during a sporting match, you could actually put a chip inside a bat, inside a tennis racket, inside a video file, and analyze the speed at which a ball is traveling, an angle by which a bat is hitting a particular ball, to pull up real time the stats of a player based upon facial recognition of, of players on a pitch. This is where the market is today. Oh, that's brilliant. So yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the transcoding only enables people to watch it. 
but they want more and they want it in real time and they want to be able to say, you know what, I don't care about this data, but I'd love to see this data. So we are so rich in terms of our ability to leverage these tools around the video file today. That's where the market is today. So I can't wait to know what, I don't know what's coming five years from now, but today you can get many of these tools on your mobile devices. You can sort out and actually get, um, for example, you can watch a movie today on your mobile device. And when you see a character in a movie, you can stop the file, click on the character, and maybe even buy some of the clothes that the character is wearing and have it ship and arrive at your house tomorrow. That's pretty amazing. And that's the kind of user experience that people are expecting. The actual end-to-end -end media workflow enables some of these deliveries. Do you like watching commercials normally? I mean, I, I thought I thought we all watch commercials only on Super Bowl Day. Right, right. some people I love the commercials. The industry here too. So but there you go. If the commercials were targeted exactly to you, right, then maybe you don't mind so much the advertising coming at you because the things you're actually interested in. If if you can get over the privacy issue, then this is really a, a, a better experience for the end user. But isn't it too late? I mean, for the privacy issue, it's, that's kind of gone by now. I think Every, everybody's tracking everything just about that you do. It, it is, so. but I think it's at different levels based upon countries. Uh, the EU has one standard of privacy, which is falling away a little bit given some recent uh, decisions. But, but nonetheless, the, the ability to deliver a relevant content to a specific user is what makes the quality of our experience that much better. Okay, well you, you could even do it something where if it's a commercial broadcast, Super Bowl for example, on a certain network, that's one thing, but for the tremendous amount of content that's being delivered online, users could opt in for different types of advertising, say, right? And so I've asked to receive messages from Hitachi Data Systems on Waskell TV, let's just say, right? And with, this, with the analytics, with everything that you guys provide, our systems could stream the video to Bob over here, and after the video or during the video, things could happen during the video that would be very interesting to him, information that he's opted in for, versus somebody else who's opted in for a whole different set. So we're just around the corner from that kind of interactivity, I guess. Going back to your point about cost, I do think that the cost of storage and the cost of compute and the cost of networking will dramatically accelerate downward um, over the next 10 years. And that's because of the volumes. It's also because of the efficiencies in the actual uh, development, which is uh, which the, the nature of uh, the curve is uh, allowing that much more to be pushed down the pipes to more and more that are paying as I said, but we're spending more and more money on these communication and entertainment services. And that is enabling better technology R&D, and we're actually spending a greater percent of our revenues on R&D. You are, yeah. So, thoughts, Bob, on, on when somebody should engage with scale logic in their production process? Like, say, you know, I, I, I think you'd probably say, at any time, call us today, right? <laughs> But um, well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, well, there's, there's, all, there's all yeah. types of things that are going to come up with a customer in their workflow when it's a complete digital workflow. But if it's a new facility, you know, we want to be brought in very early in the design in stage so we understand all the different things, all the moving parts, the applications that are going to be there. Uh, and then we can give the best consultative advice on the direction they should be taking it from the storage, from the file-based workflow, from the, the metadata management. So that's, that's the first time, you know, in new facilities or, or full upgrade uh, uh, refreshes. But any time during the life of that product as well, um, we're open for conversations. The, you know, systems start to um, age, you know, and things start to happen within or they've added additional uh, applications to the workflow that cause issues to the original design 
and that's another time that we want to take the phone call and help isolate the problems and determine how we can best help them move forward. And then again, right at the end, we've got uh, services available for doing uh, aftermarket recycling. So if we need to get out there, get the equipment out and get it put into the appropriate place uh, and get it away from their facilities, we've got those services as well. So end up with a basement of 20, 30 year old hardware, right? Seen it way too much, see it way too much. You've so, seen it a lot. Oh yeah, uh, every facility you ever walk into, there is that room or that basement that it just stacks up and they just don't know how to dispose of it legally and therefore there's lots of processes out there to do that and um, we've got connections all over the continent, uh, all over the world to, to make that happen. How about data migration? Do you find that people have maybe still old DLTs and things that may be valuable at some point but they've since long forgot how to get access to them or the drives that they had that access those tapes are no longer in existence? Yeah. They stopped working but they have these libraries they haven't migrated or is pretty much most of the folks you run into, if keeping all their assets up, bringing them forward appropriately. Uh, no, I'd say most of the people aren't bringing them forward appropriately. You know, bigger organizations that can afford to do that, yes. Smaller organizations, no. They they, they try to hold on to that particular technology so that they can bring that data back when they need it. Um, a lot of companies still today uh, put it on hard disk and throw hard disk up on the shelf, and until they want that data. They, uh, they have it up on the shelf, they bring that hard drive back in and all of a sudden that hard drive doesn't work anymore. And there's a lot of issues about to happen in the industry on getting data back that's been sitting around either on tape or on disk too long and hasn't been migrated. Um, so there, there's lots of great tools out there that we put together for handling that migration. There's different technologies that you can look on that will give you more longevity so that you don't have to migrate as often. Um, these, are, these are areas that you have to talk to the customers, see what they're prepared to do. Migration is a very timely and consuming process, so there's also companies out there that, you know, this is what they do for a living, and they'll come into facilities and help migrate it, help index it, um, you know, use the right type of MAM to, to get that data back in an area where it could be referenced again or monetized again. Um, Another service that we bring to the table is actually uh, being able to get data back when there has been a failure. If it's, uh, you know, your server room got wet or there was a fire or you had a hard crash, uh, any type of data loss, uh, we've got global services that can go in and uh, get that data back for the customer. That's they're always well received, right? That kind of help. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> and, and it's become much more affordable than it once was as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Price is coming down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a lot more affordable than throwing three guys with cameras and sending them to Brazil and having them try to recapture that, that, that content. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. Well, gentlemen, we're, we're out of time, but it was an absolute pleasure having you here on the show. Appreciate you taking the time to come in today.